like in theory he has like lots of bluffs available every 8x could turn yeah, himself yeah. into a bluff i like, love it myself a little bit there into calling. yeah but also I, I also for educational purpose you guys see they always have it i paid those 50 bucks for you guys to see they always have it yeah very generous of you <laughs> All right, here we go today with some cash game action. Today joining me, our cash game coach, Cold Smile, for some NL50 action. I think it's a very suitable stake for what a lot of you guys are playing. Um, some of you might play a little lower, some of you might play a little higher. Today we'll try to approach it from a rather exploitative uh, standpoint on how you should approach these stakes and we're trying to teach you as much as possible and yeah welcome Kurzmai. thank you so much for joining me today yeah thanks for before letting me uh, <coughs> join one of the videos one of the live wave i'm always a big fan of like tournament players jumping into cash games because i want to see okay um, how good are they how good can they deviate from the tournament ranges and how can they prove themselves in the zoom pool so yeah i'm, I'm happy to be here super excited this is gonna be great yeah we are currently running a massive massive promotion uh not only do we have the a massive sale where you get a massive discount on the button everything is massive um but also an incredible giveaway where you have the chance to play against us uh, with another ten thousand dollar prize pool uh, for home games i'm going to share more information around this later on and yeah now we just focus on the action trying to share as much value as much wisdom as possible um and if you guys want to check out what we currently have to offer if you want to step up your cash game skills for live or for online both of our courses are currently on a discount and cold smile is going to yeah, help me going through some of the hands. I mean, not why we play. That's not allowed. So he has to shut the fuck up while I play. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, on the left side, I'm betting not having a diamond. He can have ace, queen diamonds, ace, 10 diamonds. So just going for some thin value. Also, if he sits on ace, queen, ace, jack, which might be very often checking or playing this line, just going for some thin value. Um, he can still be on 10-9, queen-9 as well, of course, jack-10, jack-9 type of hands. I think we, might, I might even be able to get a, go a little bigger. Um, yeah, actually thinking about it. I think a lot of king X would bet himself. Um, exactly. And, and I don't, they don't bet... I, I would be a little bit more careful on lower stakes, uh, sorry, on higher stakes, because yes. we never have ace-king, right? Like, we can yes. get massively punished if we... Um, if we bet this too much and the good player is a way that we never have ace king, right? He can just go absolutely mental yes. uh, with applying a lot of pressure. I'm going to fold the 9-7 off here against another gun race. I think 4-5 off is better defend than 9-7 off. We're going to be much more often dominated by his ace nines, king nine, pocket tens type of hands, king nine suited that he's opening with. And I think... Very important for cash game, uh, just playing solid, playing solid, tight. If you're not so familiar with preflop ranges, I think that's where the most money is at right now, right? Um, preflop ranges, you mean? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think not only because the ranges are necessarily so good or making so much money themselves, but what they does or what they do is that they give you lots of confidence when playing post-flop because when you know what your range looks like, starting mm -hmm. with preflop, then you get so much more confident playing and executing them uh, yeah. post op and this is where uh, your money comes from and also very good point is like what we should do in theory or what happened in theory and what we are going to do anyway based on what we know about the population so if you say okay on the queen nine spot we're going to get punished by better players but this is not happening on nl50 which i would agree on then this is a very good spot to bet very thin for value and chances are that better hands are fast playing anyway so we're always betting into a range that is calling and it's worse than our two pair yeah so yeah that's great and this is how I would approach these stakes day in and day out. Um, have in the back of my mind what should happen in theory. If I don't know, I have a good guess. And then deviate as far as I can based on the information I have. Yeah. There's no need to play very close to a GTO solution. Against the min, I would defend against a 2.5x. It's probably close. Um, 
gonna go for the call um, and we just go for two big bets I think turn is very important because he's gonna have lots of ace queens queen jack jack tens that gonna call anyway can even go two or 220 I think uh, but you shouldn't bet half pot or one third pot this is interesting this might be one of these hands that you might want to be check shove all in. I mean, you have all the boats that he doesn't. He can. I'm only afraid of jacks. Uh, I'm going to check this. There's a bit of showdown value against jack 10. Oh, that's a thin call. That's yeah, a very that's thin. Cool. That's, that's, that's a very bad call, I think. Um, yeah, but you will see this a lot where people just think, oh, I have a gut shot. You know, I'm going to be calling once. Um, but he's a poker class pro, he's probably bluffing. I mean, yes, of course, that <laughs> comes into play, but I think you will see these cards a lot, yes, where just people are, are not necessarily so aware of their river ranges. Yes. Uh, six five five, gonna go for a small bet, just protecting against something like all right, interesting flop on the left, gonna be checking this. Also, sometimes with an over pair. I mean, we don't have a lot of sixes and sevens and pocket nines. We're going to be flatting them. I mean, we should be three betting a lot in this spot, right? Uh, against cutoff and button. But I think it just... Uh... And here on the right, um, we do have some 5x. We do have some over pairs. Um, I don't necessarily hate barreling this blank. Um, we don't have a club. We don't have... A diamond, we don't block we don't have block something like ace check diamonds, ace ten cups. I can see that this combo sometimes randomly barrels the turn. Um so I'm gonna go for a second bar with this hand. But yeah, ace hand is already pretty interesting in terms of deviating. I think you definitely want to have the ace of hearts here if possible. Yeah. To block his ace five. Mm -hmm. Um for a random barrel, I would I would love that. Yeah. Um but so basically, still, ace, ace and hearts, ten and spades, like the the nuts. Yes. Okay. Um, and then, as you said, you unblock basically his flop floats that are now folding on the turn. Yeah. So the heart is kind of a signal card. This is what I call them. If there's a rainbow board and there's the signal card, which is the heart on the turn, you always want to have kind of hearts to bluff to unblock his clubs, his diamonds, his spades that are floating the flop but are folding on the turn. Right. Yeah. So on the turn, it's all already about uh unblockers to his folding range so to speak yeah i so, mean i feel like this is the second how second is, best second, second best hand to, to bluff with yeah, yeah. exactly yeah, yeah. and then agree. we check something like if we have ace ten and diamonds ace ace and diamonds ten and clubs we check all exactly. these that have both of the flop suits exactly uh this is interesting i feel like I'm going to go for a second bar on the turn. Probably not so ideal to have an ace and a heart. Oh, and on the right side is an open race. Um, this but is super easy to overbluff too, right? Is This is a spot I would overbluff a lot because I also... Mm -hmm. The problem I see on low stakes that people are just floating their jack tens, jack nines, queen jacks, which they're also supposed to raise sometimes. And this is also what I've seen in tournaments when you look at some sims that you should be raising like six, seven diamonds. Yeah, you should be raising yeah. a lot, right? And the moment yeah. you just, you start calling more, you just get destroyed by second birds on the turn. And this is yes. where, yeah. even though my suits are not necessarily that great, I think this is just a spot where just close your eyes and click the pot button. Yeah, I would um, even like it a little bit more if it's not the third eight on the turn and like of more of a, I don't know, random card, like mm -hmm. a four or whatever. Um, because... Um, they always get to check raise the nuts. They always get to check raise all the eight x hands, and as you said, they are heavily lacking those all those bluff raises. So calling ranges are pretty weak. Yeah. So double barreling paired flops is actually a pretty good strategy. On yeah. the third eight, though, I'm sometimes kind of in between of trying to bluff them off a full house because if they call that big turnover bet, they only arrive with full houses on the river, and then I have yeah. to count on them folding the right amount for my over bluffing to be yeah. profitable. So. Oh, I'm going to three bet the ace five suited here. I uh, would definitely, against the three X, fold um, a lot. Like, I would fold a six suited. I would fold a seven suited. It depends on the big blind, right? If the big, I mean, he seems to be a recreational, actually, the amount of hands he played. I'm going to go for a flat. Oh, on the left is a call. 
I would call this pocket sixes on lower stakes as well. Uh, I think the main adjustment or one of the main adjustments I would make is flatting a little more on these stakes because people are not squeezing so much. You often, more often have a, uh, a weaker opponent behind and you get away with flatting a little more often than on, on uh, lower stakes. I was going to call the turn. Yeah. This is an interesting sizing. Uh, not the big fan of it. I would intuitively have bigger, a lot of bigger sizings. That's a terrible river. I hope he checks queen jack, king jack, jack nine now. If he bets, okay, we lost the minimum. That's good. Yeah, we lost the minimum. That's 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 one of the spots where you will see that a lot when people, um, when you have the second best hand, basically or like the seventh best hand against the third best hand that he can have, and you still just lose less. Like yeah, this I is mean, a win. Yeah, this that's, that's, that's that's a win for us. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Ace king off. We go for three bet. Um, ace jack. Yeah, we can have some. We can have some ace jacks. But as of now, this hand, I would definitely intend to go broke and also uh, seven deuce four. Probably want to have lots of big bets as well. Uh, we block king ten. King queen, that which is good, so he can have something like ace eight, ace nine more often. So we just go straight for value, not gonna fuck around a lot. Um, I think in theory we want to have lots of big bets here on, as well on this board, um, but again, I think we get away with smaller sizings a lot. Um, of course, you need to pay attention to it. I'm not grinding this pool, so if people start raising a lot, then you might need to adjust a bit. Um, but he shouldn't have like a shitload of raises. I mean, he only has the sets, right? Does he really want to raise a seven king seven here? I'm gonna second barrel the uh, this turn. We should play this turn very aggressive. Uh, if the clubs break, we could think about triple barreling. He's gonna have ace three clubs, ace five clubs, four x and clubs. So I would only barrel this. We block also some stronger king queen king ten type of floats on the flop, right? So this combo is actually not that bad. Um, Again, pretty easy to overbluff that turn, I think. Uh, absolutely, the, yeah. The um, the good thing is we do 7-4 is like mandatory big bet or check in theory yeah. because what happens if you bet small with your full range, the big bet is going crazy because yeah. he has like 7-4 pseudo that you can't have. He has 5-3. He has like 7x that he, that he can raise. A7, king 7, I think, are pure raises against the range bet yeah. in these positions. And this is all not happening in practice or in this player pool. And then suddenly it's, we are just allowed to range bet again, although... Um, it's not really a thing when you look at a solver at all. And it's super, super, yeah, easier to play because you don't have to worry about what kind of hands we want to check, how do I protect my checking range, yada, yada, yada. And you can just still range bet because you know you don't get punished for it. Or like okay. not enough. On the right, I delay bet the turn here, getting him to fold something like 6-5 hearts. He's still going to have like 5x and diamonds, jack x and diamonds, uh, some 8-9 eight, eight, type of floats. And I think on this river, blocking the spades, I'm going to try to get him off a jack. Don't think he will forward an ace. Um, don't want to give him such a good price to hero with a jack, and I think we can... All right, he probably got a good hand, so we just forward this. And this is the spade river is the only card where I would continue bluffing. Other than that, I would just give it up, all right. Also important to tag them as a recreational. If he limps, should also start taking some notes. 10-9-9, going to check this on the left. I'm going to check again. Uh, this is a spot where uh, you will see that he's supposed to start bluffing some like pocket deuces, pocket threes to make me fold pocket eights, pocket sevens, which I also don't think is happening enough. So I will just benefit greatly from a much higher equitalization on this turn. And then I can bluff the river, get him off pocket threes and have a little bit of an information advantage by him not turning this hands into a bluff and they're going to bet the river make him forward pocket sixes win the pot if he has an ace he has an ace so be it like, that's very good also very exploitative oh absolutely absolutely but yeah. if you look into some sims right he's supposed to start stabbing those very yeah, unnatural yeah. under pairs but yeah especially on the ace yeah exactly because he's also checking back a lot of ace highs right so actually the ace yeah. is also good for him yeah. but um I feel like people approach it also from a very, um, how would you say, um, ir irrational psychological standpoint. It's like, ah, he checks twice. He's probably trapping me with an ace kind of, you yes. know, so they play a little bit more cautious. 
Yeah. Kind of, there's that. no way that you have air that you are. Yeah, king. yeah, 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 right. exactly. Yeah. And also, king, jack, queen, jack, if you have these hand, you know, make it would be just such a disaster. It goes check, check, you lose against king, queen, you lose against pocket deuces. Yeah. Um, and the moment you you bluff into range where he has snap folds, such as king, queen, such as pocket deuces, pocket threes, these are the spots you want to be bluffing in. Yes, basically all day in in every low stake if both players can have air or auto folds or like weak ranges in general so flop goes check check turn goes check check just as in our example you want to take all this money you want to all, take all these small pots always bluff them always take and win the air versus air battles yeah um, and this is just yeah free money to get this is something i probably feel the least comfortable with uh, defending against the 3x open race because it doesn't happen a lot in, in tournament poker but I think a six off is still a little too strong to um, a little too strong to fold against the button range. Would definitely fold against the cutoff. But uh, would you fold? Would you defend any offsuit today's But big blind versus button against the three x open. Um, I think I'm starting with like ace eight probably against the three x ace eight ace nine. I think okay. Is the cut. And I think against a 2.5x king eight off from earlier is also pure foot. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> he bets the small. We don't have such a bad head to defend uh, here with. I'm just. The only thing from an exploitative standpoint, I feel like people are very hesitant bluffing Nace. But I mean, he's going to have 6 7, 6 5, all these weak flush draws. I mean, he could bet lead something with ace three and diamonds, but I feel like nut flush draws are more intuitively being checked. And also, he bets so small on the turn; it just looks like a free showdown for free showdown kind of drawy hands. All right, got him. Got him. Yeah, I would agree on that. Like, I would be, I would be fooling probably in practice because people are so yeah hesitant to bluff for the ace, and they are more likely to just check a hand like six high and lose and know that they are losing every single time instead of bluffing into an ace and get caught um, or bluffing it to a bottom pair and still get yeah, caught <laughs> yeah this is just something I, I find i found the betting pattern a little inconsistent i think people on the flush draw board when the pot is not so big they're not i think if he bets big on the turn and bets this sizing on the river i'm folding yeah um but with this line, he reps kind of a different hand on any. He, he just represents this kind of like busted flush draw, maybe like yeah. a gacha type of hand. And yeah. if I if I have like a, even if I have, um, I think eight five eight six. I prefer calling queen deuce over eight five or eight six, right? I would fold yeah. anything yeah. that has a five six or a diamond. Yeah, yeah, that's good. For obvious reasons. Yeah. And this is also why I really enjoy working uh, with you and also with Fallout and uh, Mariano, the other cash game coaches, that you guys mm -hmm. are paying a lot of attention to, to reads and playing an exploitative style. I'm going to fold this very weak suited hand. Uh, if you min raise, I would call mm -hmm. um, that it's not just, uh, yeah, you know, pure, trying to purely play GTO. And, yeah. and focus paying attention yeah. to bet size tails and, and how to get the maximum uh, uh, with your value hands. Yeah, it's a bit of, it's a bit of, should be a bit of both. So you have some, some good GTO foundation, for example, um, kind of have to have a good guess at least how spots are working in theory, what yeah. kind of bet sizes are a thing, which are, and, and what are not, because only then you can spot like those sizing tells. For example, um, in the ace queen hand, where the guy shot up with a way too strong hand and chose like a half pot turn sizing where he should always go massively big, um, we can spot that mistake because he just sized down with a hand that should go big. And the other way around, it's also happening when people are bluffing and sizing like way too big for their range and stuff like that. It can only be spotted if you know what the thing in, in theory. So yeah, a bit of both, but yeah, um, I'm more of a practical guy when it comes to that. And This is a bit of a weird spot. Just feel like my outs are sometimes dead. Uh, might be a tight fold. I mean, this is a weird line, right? Facing those big blind donk bets, and uh, it's yeah, it's not that you're ask. 
Hmm. But like what was what was the action for the Jack Ten hand on the turn? He just he de donks the flop and donks the turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would be folding too if he donks twice there. It's not a thing. I think. Uh, off off the from the cutoff. Make it. You you have to make it very big blind defender. I mean, this guy played a, a loads of uh, hands, so this is always a good indicator that he might be a regular. This is also an interesting spot. I think he's on the double flush draw board. He will very often now start protection betting his jack. So I'm going to go for a check race. And from ace 10, ace king, or let's say seven and pocket eights, pocket nines, we only get one street of value. You should very often just go for bet turn and bet river. Um, this is exactly what we try to accomplish. Hmm. And this is a spot where you want to be going very big because with this ray with this line he barely has any strong hands. This is interesting. I mean, we have two backdoor gutshot hands, backdoor flush draw, but people open and then half pot. I think I'm going for the turnover bet. Um, yeah. With the pocket also trees, like then, also like that. Yeah. And then jamming river. Okay. Um, because what happens on the queen jack seven is that he's supposed to bet all of his hands, right? Yeah. Um, there's no checking at all. And if they check it, they always have some kind of queen nine jack ten ace jack type of hand, and always kind of some bluff catching hand. So what I do is that I'm heavily under bluffing this spot and go purely for value with as big of a sizing I can I can choose which is all in on the river for like 2x pot or 2.5x pot and then he's always in that ah oh, i never have a better hand than queen 10 here and he always like kind of 50 50 spot but in reality he thinks it's a 50 50 spot uh, against my bluffs but i've sold it it's actually more of a 90 10 for me so every time he calls one of those bluff catchers like i print yeah um and i think i want to give him the opportunity um to lose his stack in this in this line that shouldn't really exist yeah so you would bet something like six, seven dollars and then jam the river, yes. Jam the river. This is a spot on the left where not a single second I wasted my time on thinking how do I play my range? Rather his line looks super strong. I don't think he will ever fold, so I'm just going for maximum value. Like yes. ace jack, king jack, queen jack, or counterfeited two pairs. Jack three, Jack eight. I mean, it's a scary. It's a bit of a scary card for him. So I was just anticipating that if he checks the river there, he's not gonna have like Jack five that check raises the flop, check, bets the turn, right? He's like yes. Ace Jack King Jack and better. Um, or or he has cares, air that folds anyway. Or he has air that folds anyway. Yeah. Gonna call here with overcard in the gutter. Eight seven off pretty close. <clears throat> His flop sizing was a bit he's probably not a fan of me anymore after this hand. <laughs> <laughs> a pleasure to lose versus you should have said. Yeah, he should go bigger, I think. Yeah. And this is also something like, yeah, sizing according to hand strength, right? If he has a set, he just goes massive, overbets the turn. And if he has ace jack, he might go a little bit smaller, bet a little bit smaller on the turn to get called by worse hands, yada, yada, yada. So this is something you can spot a lot. If you can pay attention to that, um, you can make pretty big adjustments. And this is also what separates, I think, a two big blind winner on 50 NL or a three big blind winner from a five, six, or even seven to 10 big blind winner on 50 NL. That you can just, yeah, um, spot those mistakes and play according to it and get the maximum out of your hand, knowing that it's probably not a thing in theory, but you think, okay, he's probably on a very big bluff catching hand, such as Ace Jack, and they just got uh, yeah. everything. All right. I mean, squeezing mm -hmm. is fine as well, but. This guy insta calls half stack seems like a recreational, so I'm just gonna call, try to hit a big hand. I'm 
going to try to start attacking some hands under pairs. Uh, we can easily call a race. All right, folding out already two players. That's not too bad. Yeah, also, yeah, we get calls from like 9-8 suited, queen-9 suited, king-queen suited yeah. that are very often checking back. So like when called, our equity is actually really, really good against yes. their calling range. Yes. And like these small bets, four ways or five ways, especially like in those bomb pots or something like that, which is not uh, on stars, but somewhere else, then um, it's, it's so strong betting into four people, right? If yeah. there's a guy with like 10-9 suited, he's puking into a bucket and folding <laughs> because he still has like two guys behind. There's like two flush draws and overguard. So this is very, very strong and looks very strong. So this is... Uh, yeah, good tool to use and to have in your mm -hmm. arsenal. Pocket does if he checks, gonna start bluffing this. Same principle as we had earlier, in my opinion, mandatory bluff with a heart. Uh, we can also have big bets on this board. It does connect with our button range really well. We flood, um, flood a lot of the, the pocket sevens, some pocket tens, queen tens, uh, queen tens suited. We have a lot of high equity draws, but I think the small bet will do the job if he sits on ace, eight, and clubs, if he sits on pocket fives. Uh, that's what we're trying to target. If you go bigger, you start targeting 10-9 clubs. Um, this is... I mean, we st we still have value bets, right? We have king-9, queen-jack. Um, not necessarily great, but he's still going to sit on ace-10. He's still going to... You need to think about w what are the faults he can still have. And um, we block ace twos and hearts that can play like this, which is not too bad. I'm going to bl keep bluffing this on this card. Um... And if the river is hard, I will continue bluffing. He's still going to have 10-9, king-jack, ace-jack that might call once more. And then we get him to fold on the river. He on the right. This looks very disgusting. I think if he squeezes against two under the gun players, I'm just going to... I also think ace-king now raises the turn. Um, also pocket nines, pocket eight, like especially pocket... Okay, now I'm going to give this... He, he tanks so long. I think I'm gonna fold this. I mean, if I call and they overcall with their pairs, it's actually not that bad either. Yeah. Does he tank? I'm, ugh, yeah, but having the <laughs> uh. yeah, having the heart is not great. Um, would bluff something like Ace Five Spades and just give this up. All right, discipline give up. That's why sometimes paying attention to the suits. That was a close one. <laughs> yeah, I almost leveled myself into um, into I see uh, Jack's also sometimes flooding here actually. I don't I don't hate it. Wah. Um I, I can imagine this is a spot because we have all the 6x. Um, I mean, we chop very often. I'm going to go for a check jam actually with this hand. Or like a huge race. But uh, spades is probably not so good. I don't think we take spades. We probably take something like 7-4 seven, seven, on diamonds. 7-8, not blocking spades. I think just this is probably just a fold. And here we call. Um, what do you think about the pocket deuces hand? I think that was a... Yeah, so what I was about to say is like, if 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 you didn't, like if the viewer didn't pay attention on how you approached that spot, I would highly recommend going back and see what your thought process was when starting out uh, with that hand. So you have deuces on a queen 10 seven with like uh, no equity at all and started with, okay, what does my range look like? Can I have some strong hands? So you started with that, which is perfect for identifying, okay, what kind of bluffs can I have and how does my range looks like and how does that um, connect with the board texture? So you said, okay, I have lots of strong hands so I can start barreling because I fold out better hands such as threes, fours, five, sixes, uh, pocket eight, seven, eight, ten x hands and stuff like that. And this is how it goes. This is how it works. And this is how sh you should do it too. So Make up your mind how your range looks like and then go from there. Never be something like, okay, um, I have deuces here, I'm going to bluff. So this is what I really, really liked a lot. Um, 
in terms of the hand, I think I really like betting flop. And then, yeah, turn is kind of dicey because every kind of 10x hand that he check calls has additional equity. And I don't think we get many folds on the turn directly. Even hand like ace-10, king-10 could just station for some weird reason. Uh, but also the tank threw me off a bit because it, it looked weak uh, because he was thinking about maybe folding, maybe raising. Uh, and then river, I think, is just... Uh, a give up because I think Ace Jack, King Jack, everything in his range is now a good bluff catcher. It's very hard for him to have come up with a lot of folds here. I mean, we triple bear on this board. Don't you think a reasonable player would fold his Ace Jack, King Jack, Jack 10, 10 9, Jack 9? Don't you think we still have? I would I would have blasted if, if I have something, if I started bluffing yeah. something like Ace 8 spades, Ace 5 spades. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's also very difficult for him to identify which hands are now the better bluff catcher. What is better? Like my jack nine, my ace jack, my king jack, my ten nine, my ace ten. What is everything kind of looks good because yeah. it blocks something, right? So it's super hard for him to overcall that spot um, by a mile because he can't really make a difference between all of his bluff catchers, which are good, which are bad. Yeah. I'm gonna go. I, th I don't think small makes a lot of sense. I don't think anything better folds, but against the big bet, and we have loads of equity like 6 5, king 5, we already get him to fold. Um, I do have some stronger checkbacks as well on this board that is pretty good for the big blind. Yeah. Um, and if gold would, if they check twice, they don't have it. Yeah. <laughs> um, another interesting spot with the jacks, but I, I have to be honest because I was listening to your. To what you were sharing yeah, um, <laughs> the pocket jacks i felt like i don't think it's the worst he's going to check a lot of his over pairs on the turn um, i actually don't hate going for a check raise on the river uh, let's replay the action yeah what do you think about the preflop flat by the way uh, yes gto does that a little bit i'm personally not a huge fan of it because mm -hmm. people tend to call every pair in every position to any kind of free bet and to set mine. And this makes my three bet with pocket jacks just so much better than the flat. Okay. So yeah. um, I'm going to go for a pure three bet here. I like it a lot as well. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to show you the alternative, uh, how to play this hand, because there might be the situation that you have encountered or you have identified someone is very tight. Then it yes. doesn't make sense to three bet yes. a lot, right? Exactly. Um, and then on the flop, I also like a sizing with aces. I think it's very good. Uh, turn check is okay. I think, I mean, there's still going to be like all the 5x and diamonds, 9x nine, nine and clubs, right? Like, oh, wait, he had, he had both suits of that, right? So actually, yeah, okay. It's yeah, probably it's a good check. Um, we don't really know if he picked it by suits so or if he just checks all of his aces. Yeah. But yeah. If what do you think about check, check? What do you think about check raising on the river? I think it's good, especially after he took that polarized flop strategy. So basically he already said, yeah. I have a very strong hand or I have like a very good bluff and like nothing really in between. So I think he's like very, very unlikely to come up uh, with a nine or yeah. with some um, pocket eights or something like that. This is just checking that river and very much more likely to have like a big pair um, or absolutely nothing. And that needs to bluff that river. Also, he improved with his king jack and his queen jack a little bit. Unlikely if we have pocket jacks. But I think because of the flop sizing, I like check jamming river or check raising river a lot. Uh, against small blind flooding ranges, I will decrease my betting frequency just because it's stronger. That means my betting range is over a little stronger. That's why I also want to have a little a bit more like half pots. Um, all right interesting i mean we call once but we're already puking <laughs> i think if he bombs the turn i would just fold right away um gonna check this against his calling range we're almost drawing dead against his checking like if it, if it goes check check our equity is like 70 80 percent against his jack tens king jacks and we want to put ourselves in those high equity put, uh, situations I think the spade is pretty much irrelevant because you would continue if you had like king, jack, and spades, right? If he raised the flop, he would bear it. All right. I don't mind. I don't mind this line. I actually like it. I think he just, I mean, yeah, on the turn, he is uh, losing against um, a lot of better against ace king, obviously, and against ace queen, and against anything else, we split. I think this hand, I just, I would just um, three bet this preflop on the left, yes. on the right. 
uh, in position we can bet a quarter. I think out of position, uh, even on a mono board, I often two overs and a gutter. Not the biggest sizing. We still sometimes good. Gonna station him once. If he checks, I think we have to bluff this. I mean, we have ace ten, we have jack ten, um, pocket tens. And we don't not gonna float something like ace five, so I'm gonna go for three fifty. Don't want to bet too. I I shouldn't have a lot of bluffs on this board. So probably the ace kings. All right. And never be too careful with queen jack. Uh, also, did we not bet the flop on the queen a three rainbow? I did not bet. No. Oh, I okay. think yeah, it's definitely a good bet as well. Yeah. I was. I was uh, explaining the which hand were we playing the the flash draw hand. Yeah, yeah the hand before. On the right, um, gonna go for. Gonna... Big bet on the turn with a double flush. If he if he has something like queen ten diamonds, um, he's not gonna fold. He can speed like yes. an ace king diamonds that floats the flop. Interesting, interesting. Also here, I mean, first of all, from this position, we should be three betting a lot, but he hasn't played a lot of hands, so would assume my chances are high, chances are high that he's a recreational. Um, could be a good turn, could be a terrible turn, a river if he's on queen 10, gonna go for a half pot. Um, trying to get caught by jacks, tens, nines, eights. Oh, I think that's our first big hand today. Jacks, we had jacks once. Ah, that's not looking good. I mean, we can't jam this because he can still be on pocket fives, right? Um, so we don't get caught by anything worse, so we just call. But yeah. That's unfortunate. Um, usually, I would call a lot against the big blind uh, three bet, but when he makes it that small, I'm going to uh, going to forbid this straightforward. That screen name game is also very yeah. on point. Magnus Carl. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah. And we bet the flop, and we actually can make it small. We don't need to. I mean, if he's a flush or the money goes in anyway, uh, I want him to continue with very shitty hands. I'm also going to bet the turn here. Um, I think it's more likely that he's on kings, ace, queen off. Um, If he, <laughs> ay, 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 ay. um, well, it happens. It happens. Um, just just thinking if he should have leads on the river, but we of course check. We have shot on value against all the ace queen offs. He can sit on pocket kings, so uh, we're gonna lose it often, though. Of course, jags. Wow, Ooh, that's an ambitious turn card. Yeah. I'm going to call this on the right. Very small squeeze. He's very likely overcalling. He seems like a fun player. You want to get involved in these pots. <clears throat> also, like the pocket aces hand, there's some merit to just jamming pre um, for okay. all of it. Okay. Because big blind versus early position, big blind versus middle position. So if you look at a millions and millions of hands of this population they run around with like one to three percent frequencies in three betting yeah. so this is like jacks plus ace king so they never fold and i never want them to get this kind of flop and not get everything from pocket jacks and they don't have a folding range interesting so, i love this one yeah that's a great well, advice so that's an excellent aces, advice yeah all of it you see like how 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 you you how even i am stuck in like 
the paradigms I have, and I think it's good, right? And then just, hey, think about just going fucking all in and just blast it off, right? Yeah, yeah. That's why it is, it's not like I'm doing this on, on 50 and L or 25, and I do that on higher stakes too. If I have a sample size on someone and they forget all their bluffs from big blind against under the gun, which is super easy to do, and they always have a value hand, I'm just sending it and then always getting caught. And they never have that issue that there's an overcard peeling off and I don't get everything from queens and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, you could do that for sure. Yeah, I love it. And this is exactly what you mentioned, right? It's then it's it's just not so about GTO. Like if he's supposed yeah. to three bet in GTO, let's say four or five percent, but population three bets one to two percent, you just rip your aces and kings, right? Yeah, exactly. And you That's even don't need to four bet your queens, or you don't even need to four bet your ace king because you just Exactly. Pure calling. I've never would would four bet queens or ace king here. Yeah. Jack eight calling. suited, jack nine suited, probably not the worst hand to three bet against one of these positions. Uh, he's gonna have some better ace high flows. We just check it. Um, he insta checks, I'm insta putting. <clears throat> Interesting that he bets big. Yeah, this is also something I would uh, pick up on if they have those big C bet sizings on boards where everything wants to bet very small with yeah. like kind of a high frequency. And usually this is like kind of yeah, sizing triggered by hand strength. So I would be very careful and maybe fold a little bit more against those big sizings. Yeah. Ace for three in general, very often not a good board for us as the out of position prefab raiser. Um, we are not really raising a lot of ace-4, ace-3 off. We, sh um, we don't have 4-3 suited or 4-3 off, which he could defend 5-2 suited. Um, also, a lot of our broad ways that we open raise are just in a in a um, terrible, terrible shape on these boards. And River, we just... The way he plays these... I mean, he could have ace-8, ace-9, but I think it's more often the king. So we're just trying to get value from a king. Yes, pretty important because ace four three looks so easy to range bet. There's an ace yeah, on it, right? It's so it, probably also misplayed a lot from a lot of players out of position. Yeah, yeah, yeah. way too much c biting, and uh, you need to be careful. Yeah, you need to be careful there uh, for sure. Oh, this is the same guy, so he's very likely a regular. And he makes a fold. Very disciplined, very disciplined. And we get aces again. Now it's time. <clears throat> What's your impression so far in terms of preflop progression? Would you say you can already see a tendency that people are three betting less, are squeezing less, or uh, less um, compared to, to what? To higher to stakes, of course. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, 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 for sure. Like 50 NL is like tighter in three betting, tighter in calling. Um, they don't call down enough. Um, lots of folding. So there's lots of uh, barreling you can do. Um, and again, especially in these positions or in these situations where you can easily forget all your bluffs, um, mm -hmm. they usually um, forget those and just run around with a value only range. And then you can play according to that. 7 8 suited. We're going to peel 3 right here out of position. Oh, it's probably the boards where you also want to have some leads as a 3 bet player, uh, as the out of position um, caller. You're going to have all the sets. You're going to have the 7 8 suited, which he's not. Uh, this is probably one of the boards that is very, very good for you. I'm going to just lead into him. Uh, don't want him to check back ace, king, and hearts, which he's calling. And we keep betting. I expect ace king, ace jack, like a lot of these overcards are checking back anyway, so I don't see a lot of value coming from those hands anyway. Um, but they might be calling. But I might be totally wrong, of course. But I do think there's a high chance that we lead these boards and he's just thinking I'm full of shit now. 
I mean, he's gonna have like king queen diamonds, king jack king ten diamonds. And uh, we don't defend a lot of off suited combos, so we don't gonna have like jack ten off, queen jack off, etc. We don't have ace kings. Yeah, I like do, this. Do you think uh, we we lead a lot on these boards? Uh, in theory, yes. Uh, you can have a leading range for sure, like calling yeah. small rent versus big rent three bet. Um, I always like kind of not advise it to do too much because it's very hard to play correct and it's there's room for fucking it up. But um, I think from an exploitative point of view, leading these boards and trying to get stacks in and not allow him to not lose his stack with an overpair is a great strategy. So I would choose just do it and be pretty value heavy in that spot. Um, also, what the player pool tries to do when they have aces, for example, they see a flop like six, four, five, flush draw, they're like, okay, how can I not lose my stack here? Mm -hmm. How can I avoid the cooler situations instead of trying to get your stack from flush draws, tens, jacks, what you can have in the small blind? So um, they're way too passive. You saw it earlier with the ace queen guy or the queen jack guy who's like checking like clear value bets on the river. And I think this happens a lot. And then leading and playing that fast play that hand yourself um, is way better than um, checking and try to get him to do the betting because um, from experience, they are like way too passive in those situations. Ninja of off is. I mean, I think I should fed this with this guy in the big blind that I've identified as a, as a weaker opponent. Uh, Ace queen king ten. Yeah. It was king no, 10 on the right, the king jack off. Uh, king ten oh, is probably okay. check on the turn. But again, I just go straight for value there. Uh, the flop went check check in the king yeah. ten. Hand. Oh, I just yeah, think okay. that he's oh, checking back ace highs on the turn again very yeah. often. So I don't want let, I don't want him to check back uh, something like ace ten or ace king or ace five. Yeah, exactly. And again, the spot where should bet like all his range of the flop. So if they don't, they usually have some kind of hand. Yeah. And um, Ace improves them too. So I would do some like a lot of fast playing here. Not a lot of big pots here today, actually. It's a lot of like non showdown winnings grind. Uh, yes. You will have these sessions a lot as well. Um, probably opening nine, like eight, seven off could be an open. It's probably close. Two beautiful hands. And we're going to three bet the kings and also a spot where even someone three bets before four bet and we go broke. Uh, I don't think uh, there is any situation where we would uh, forward kings pre-flop i mean if he opens three bet four bet five bet all in we can forward or we open three bet four bet five bet all in six bet all in we can forward kings but that's rarely the case but you also see a very little four betting not so much. i i if i play zoom 500 or in a 5k every second hand you face a three bet it just yeah. you yeah. just can clearly see how you get away with way more flat calling and just trying to hit good hands. Yeah, I would agree on that. Oh, Basically, okay. on the higher stakes, you always get punished if you like are a little bit too weak in some sort of your game plan, your range. It always gets identified pretty quick. And then they're going to try to attack you. They're going to try to take it away from you. And this is just not happening in low stakes. So we can just, yeah, basically ignore the strength of our checking ranges and all that bullshit and go straight for value yeah. hands and take them to value town because all of your winner, almost all of the winner comes from value betting correctly uh, and not like finding crazy, crazy bluff spots. Yeah. So here also I would extend my opening range a lot, uh, especially the small big button seems to be uh, a weaker opponent. Small blind seems to be a weaker opponent. Uh, I'm gonna go for a big bet on this texture. Should maybe even not have ace nine off against my hijack range. It's close though. On the left, we just go for small sizing. Um, don't want to blow up the pot against his very suited heavy flooding range. It's gonna sit on like 10, three and hearts, jack five and diamonds or jack four and diamonds, right? So small bet does its job. No need to go big. Yes, sir. <clears throat> I'm just like, I feel like I, I won eight, nine out of 10 situations where I open race from the small blind. Uh, yeah. It just, 
Should probably just open a lot from this moment as well. Uh, we call here. Um, also a big mistake that I see, I'm not gonna float this hand, even though you might think, ah, ace, queen, high, you know, like low card board, we have to peel once, but um, just not overboard. Yeah. I would also, if you play with a hut, um, play, uh, pay close attention to how much people are folding their big blind to small blind steals. Yeah. So some players are running around, so GTO numbers are something like folding frequencies are like 41. Uh, I think this is like kind of kind of GTO against the small blind 3x. Uh, and then people running around not only with like 50% folding, but also with 60, 65, just folding everything. And suddenly um, you have an any two card spot out of the small blind. Yeah. So I would, um, if you play with a heart, make sure that stud is is into the, into that heart somewhere. And you can look at it and yeah, have enjoy those any two open raises. It's also a lot of fun. 853, I think this is a pretty decent spot to bet big on the flop against uh, with this hand and here we just go bet 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 I don't think there's so much to say on the left we can continue value betting now to two more streets and I'm also gonna jam this river uh, V has 8-9 that's very unfortunate this is interesting I mean, since I bet big, he can still have all his strong hands. If I would have bet small on the flop, I have an easier time very betting the river. Um, what? <laughs> that was kind of non-believing. Um, okay, so we bet big on the flop, bet big on the turn. Is this too greedy? I shouldn't have a lot of king highs though. I'm gonna go against an eight. I mean, king eight, jack eight, possible. Um, ha! I mean, we have a lot of better hands to, to bet with. Um, check eight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's exactly exactly what you said hand. against like big flop bet. So he has like more slow plays in his yeah. range than against the small blade because against the small blade, everything needs to raise and basically play that hand. Yeah, but also like in theory, he has like lots of bluffs available. Every eight x could turn yeah, himself yeah. into a bluff. I leveled X. myself a little bit there into calling. Yeah, but also, I, I also for educational purposes, you guys see they always have it. I paid those fifty bucks for you guys to see. They always have it. Yeah, very generous of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the pocket deuces. I mean, this is just like. Uh, yeah, this is some. I mean, especially with the ten. I think the worst hand you can call the turn is the ten and clubs. Yeah, and then Pocket Tens has no, like, zero percent, I mean, almost no chance to improve against your value range. Even yeah. if you just have a jack, he has two outs and he's calling down to improve on two outs. Yeah. And Ace reverse implies against 8-9. Yeah. All right. Um, gonna get big or big out of position. I mean, that's just... There's a... You know, we had a decent session and you can see in, like... Um, two hands. It can turn it from a solid session into a. All right, we get it in. <laughs> we might run into Jack. I think actually it's pretty likely that he has Jack Ten, right? Because Ace King, Ace Queen, like people don't limp it, but they have all the Jack Tens, right? Yeah, ah, you love mean, to see like... it. You love to see it. Good. That's good. That's basically the only hand. Um that is gonna get it in there king queen yeah. it's like literally king queen and jack tens yeah exactly i was like about to say it's this, actually this we're not getting it it's so good on average there. yeah this this looks way better than it is yeah <laughs> all right this this helps helps a little bit to to bring the session somewhat back around maybe break even i don't know we don't care we try to play the hands well i'm was one of the spots where you said um you have a total different opinion um, and don't hold back with criticism. Um, or do you think boss played somewhat solid? If, if you 
maybe see it more now from a, from a coach coach perspective. Like how you play right now? Yeah, just the, the session. Like also imagine okay. like a student would have a similar take and like agree with my thoughts yeah. and then you would jump in and say. Um, um, yeah, so I think you do like a great job at seeing what people are doing wrong and acting accordingly. And this is like based on your tournament background, obviously, because you do that all day every day and do very well and have like lots of experience um if i saw a student play like this i would definitely tell him to not limb the small blind and not do so much cold calling because he's obviously way worse post flop probably than you are and he can't get all these small spots um into a plus ev spot because of um, the high rake on 50, 50 oh. NL. so yeah, i would probably the uh mm -hmm. The only yeah. thing I would really recommend is to simplify a lot preflop, not do too much cold calling, also not on the button, although GTO does, I would just go for a three bit only approach to get him more confident in what he's doing because he knows what he does preflop and then we can go from there. So for example, the pocket deuces you caught and you explained very well yeah. how your range looks like and why you can use that as a bluff. And this is how I want, would want him to think as well. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, and I, I also personally, if I try to be very objective on this session, of course, small things here and there. The, the Jack Nine Off was probably like uh, a bad call yeah. on the river yeah, that yeah. is uh, very questionable. Um, in theory, not. In theory, I think this could mix in calling because um, yeah, um, I think it's not that bad. But against the population, I think this is this is a spot. I think I'm just gonna fold the turn. Uh, he bets big into two people on the flop. Um, yeah, right. we don't have, I f if I have queen seven suited here, I think it's just so much better. Um, I mean, you could have queen 10, right? If he's see value betting from Germany, just, I I'm afraid that he just goes for another big bet. Like I, I don't know how he does with his queen 10, queen nine suited, ace queen three bets pre. Uh, if he bets the river, I'm folding though now. <laughs> if there's a chance that your hand is still good, it's just like king, queen, pocket eights, pocket fives, then uh, we should. Well, how do you see this turn spot? Do you think there's a chance he's doing this yeah, with queen? Yeah, sometimes, like, basically, he he probably fucked up his sizing because yeah. he went all in on the rivers. That means probably he had pocket fives or something, and he should, like, pick some bigger sizings. So with his sizings, I would actually be afraid, too, that he bets, like, a weak hand or, like, a weaker hand than ours sometimes, at least. But then again, he bets big on the flop into two players, then back bits on the turn again. I would yeah. fold, like, queen jack on a non-paired board, I think, is a better call than on a paired board um, because you can still improve on the jack so you have five outs instead of just two with the queen yeah you are true playing. so i think when i'm bluff catching on the turn already and i'm like praying that he shuts down the river i'm folding on the turn uh, with my bluff catcher i was not I, I that's why i think like if i have a bluff catcher i 100 percent agree with you yeah. i just like do i don't know that? the player if i get a bit more familiar to the player who has like yeah. well because he knows the big blind has down to queen to suit it right so if he has queen yeah. nine queen ten it's super easy with a queen nine queen ten to approach it from well, I can sit on jacks, I can sit on ace-king, I can sit on a middle pair, right? Um, yes. He probably also thinks that ace-king, ace-queen, so he's probably only really afraid of queen-jack, right? Yeah, for um, sure. And do I call an eight? If he bets big blind calls, I probably have the least amount of eight x. Mm -hmm. So I just think that he could easily value bet queen-ten, queen-queen-nine queen once on the turn, and then, and he also two-third is not like super big, mm -hmm. right? And just right. trying to freeze the action and then check it back on the river. But you're right. If I have a pure bluff catcher, if I don't think he will ever have a worse hand value betting, then I fold, fold the turn. Yeah. Yeah. That's why at first I was like, yeah, I have a bluff catcher, I fold the turn. But then, wait a minute. There's a chance, yeah, yeah. right, that he has There's queen a chance, queen yeah. turn. Yeah, yeah so, for sure. But also, like, requires some kind of knowledge from that guy to identify, okay, who has, like, what kind of range and the least amount of 8x and all what yeah. you just said needs to go through his head as well. Absolutely. Which is sometimes, I think the lower the stakes are, a little bit more unlikely. So I wouldn't give guys playing those games lots and lots of credit and basically go back to uh, 
a little bit of a plain thinking about the spot, but obviously you are correct in that. But that's where I think the plain thinking is I have a top pair. I don't want to face a, a, a massive river decision, so I just bet the turn. It's easier to yeah. play, right? It's easier to yeah, execute yeah. when you have Wait. a very, very... That's what, what I think. That's how a lot of this, these players think. Maybe not him necessarily. I don't know him, yeah. but I'm just making my assumptions that people come from a rather plain thinking on NL50 and adjust my strategy according to that. Right? Yeah, that's yeah, why yeah, yeah. Um, I I, yeah. I wouldn't expect people thinking like this a lot of the times where oh, he can have a lot of eights, he cannot have a, a poc, uh, an eight here or uh, rather more this kind of trying to simplify, trying to like, oh, I have a top here, like I have queen 10, I don't know what to do on the river, I don't want to face a big bet. So I bet myself like two third, protect myself against the, the nasty river decision. So yeah. Um, yeah, this is actually, uh, this is the thinking I would like to see from the student. Like, yeah. bet turn for a little bit thin value and be like, okay, I've I've gained my and value. And it makes sense. There. Yeah. It makes sense, yeah? yeah. And then not, like, check the turn and try to bluff catch the river against massive bets. Yeah. And I'm always trying to advise that to bet the turn a little bit thinner, then take the free showdown and win against weaker hands instead of checking and pray that people are bluffing or value better worse hand. Yeah. So, yeah. Absolutely. Good smile. Thank you so much right. for joining. If you want to check him out, he also offers private coaching. He's active on our Discord. Highly recommend. We're working together now for quite some time. Yes. Also, if you want to know more about our current promotions around our cash game courses, check in the description, the bundle, the live cash game and the online apprentice cash game course, both together, uh, a discount up to $250. Check in the description. And more importantly, if you want to play against us for an additional price pool of 10K in the home games, very low stakes, don't worry. Um, you get the chance to participate, but you will also find all information in the description. Uh, that's gonna be insane. I'm really looking forward to this. And then I hope you guys have uh, enjoyed this video. And if you want to criticize us, no, don't criticize us. Uh, of course, we hate this and all, uh, all jokes aside, but if you have questions, if you feedback, whatever, drop it in the comments. And thank you so much for watching. Coach Mai, thank you so much for taking the time and then see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye guys. Mm -hmm.